Welcome to The Commute, a Bible study podcast designed to turn your commute into an opportunity to grow in your faith. Whether you're sure of what you believe or you're not sure what to believe, this podcast is designed to help you better understand who Jesus is, what the Bible's all about, and how that applies to your life today. I'm your host, Pastor Matt, and I'm excited to dive into this week's episode of The Commute. Hey everybody, welcome to The Commute. Pastor Matt here again and uh, flying solo with you because Pastor Casey is still on vacation, but uh, I'm glad he's getting a good long vacation as well because it's definitely uh, a needed and refreshing time to get to do that. Hey, um, super excited because you probably noticed I am once again whoop, sitting in front of the Faith Over Fear image. We are kicking off the series this weekend. I, I want to strongly encourage you, man, share this series with somebody. It's going to be a great opportunity to be able to help people learn how they can hold on to faith in the midst of a time where it's very easy to fall into fear and anxiety and worry. Um, So very excited about that. We're going to be uh, jumping through the book of Joshua, so it'll be really good. Um, But today, I'm super pumped because we are kicking off a book that is one of of the most interesting books uh, in the New Testament, I think. Um, It's the book of Revelation. And here's the deal with Revelation. Revelation, uh, as a Bible reader, it either scares people off um, or people get way too into it um, to, to kind of like the point of they're trying to find the signs everywhere. And so what I think is either side would be um, kind of missing the point of Revelation. I think Revelation um, is an incredible book of the Bible that can be a very encouraging thing, especially in times like this. Um, and what do I mean times like this? So we have been living through the the pandemic um and the pandemic uh in 2020 uh if you're listening to this this is when we're recording in this 2020 um has been a really interesting time i think because one it reminds people that we're not as in control as we thought we were um you know our plans don't always work out the way we want them to um that we don't always get to dictate um where we go what we do um how we live our life right we're not as autonomous as we thought Um, we're affected by all the things around us. Um, And I think in moments like this, moments where the world is really shaken up, um, moments where everything kind of changes overnight, which was kind of a weird part of the pandemic, it's really important to be reminded that we do as Christians have something that is unchanging. Um, We have something that we can anchor our life into. And that's why you are so well equipped to walk through the trials and the challenges of life. In fact, I think oftentimes in, in Christianity, in American Christianity, there's this thing, this prosperity gospel that slips in. Um, and in the prosperity gospel, it leads people to believe that if you follow Jesus, everything's always supposed to go well for you. It's supposed to be easy. You're supposed to be wealthy, happy, um, healthy. And, you know, the, the reality is that's not the Christianity of Scripture that we read. Um, but the powerful part is this. The scripture, the Christianity of Scripture, is a scripture is a Christianity that can walk with you in the midst of suffering, can strengthen you in the midst of the trials of life, and there is no better book that gives us a picture of that than Revelation. And the reason Christianity is so powerful in being able to help us through the challenges and trials of life is because Christianity offers a hope that can't be moved in Jesus. In fact, the book of Revelation, so I'm kind of going all over the place a little bit. I'll kind of hammer it back here to Revelation. Um, So you're looking at the first five chapters this week of Revelation. And Revelation was originally written by the Apostle John, same one that wrote the Gospel of John, same one that wrote the first, the three letters of John that we find in the New Testament. And so John has been exiled to the island of Patmos. Um, They tried to martyr him by boiling him alive, which I know is a crazy thought when you think about it, but he lived, right? Because Jesus said at the end of the gospel of John, you know, if, if I don't want to take him till I come back. Um, And there's a lot of debate. Like a lot of people thought John wouldn't die before Jesus actually came back. He did get to see the end as his vision of revelation, but he's the one only uh, disciple that was not martyred that died of natural causes. And um, so John is uh, exiled off to the Island of Patmos And um, it says that he has this revelation um, where Jesus kind of comes to him and talks to him. And John is writing this uh, revelation to to the churches. And to the early churches, he's writing this book to churches that are in the midst of intense persecution and suffering. Um, And so that's what's so amazing about Revelation. 
Um, Revelation is not a book that's, that's written that gives you the sense that, you know, if you're a follower of Christ, everything will be good for you. You know, you'll always be healthy, wealthy, and happy and all that kind of stuff. But rather, the book of Revelation is written to the church as a reminder that your suffering will have an end, um, that Jesus is coming back. And so because Jesus is coming back, um, take encouragement in the midst of your suffering, but also realize Jesus is coming back and get out there and share Jesus with the world around you through the way that you live, through um, the people that you interact with. Um, you are a reflection of the gospel in the places you live, work, and play. In fact, that's a big part of what it means to be a disciple, is somebody who experiences, connects, and reflects Christ in the places they live, work, and play. And so um, John is, is really cool in this, but here are a couple of things that, that really become anchors in, in this book of Revelation. One is the fact that it all centers on Jesus. So one of the reasons Revelation is hard to read is because it's written in a secular fashion. Um, so when we're used to reading things, we're used to reading things more in like a linear fashion. And so that means there's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. Um, but oftentimes in Hebraic thought, they would describe things. So it would be like, here's, here's the point, and I'm going to walk around it and describe it from multiple different angles, if that makes sense. And so that's what John is doing with the end times. In these visions, he's describing the end of the world, Jesus coming back in, in different ways. Um, and so if you are reading Revelation in a linear way, um, the world ends several times, and the world can't end several times. It can only end once. Um, but, you know, that's why you want to make sure that you're kind of reading it in more of a Hebraic fashion. And this is where things like a commentary, uh, things like the bibleproject.org, which is a phenomenal resource um, to be able to, to, to dig more into scriptures. Things like that are incredibly helpful. Make sure, though, when you're dealing with Revelation, you pick up a good commentary. One of my favorites is uh, Dr. Brighton's commentary, a Concordia commentary. Uh, you can get it through CPH if you want to really dig in. Um, but he has a phenomenal take on the book of Revelation. And uh, he's able to do it in a really Christ-centered, gospel-centered, scripture-centered way um, versus kind of like a really weird take that's not really in line with all of Christian history. Um, so one of the things that sticks out to me and uh, that I wanted to kind of sit on today is um, chapter one, verse eight. And it says this, this is Jesus talking. He says, I am the alpha and the omega, says the Lord God, who is and was and is to come, the almighty. Now, this is why revelation is so powerful. This is why your faith is so powerful. I want you to hear that again. Um, Revelation chapter one, verse eight, I am the alpha and the omega, says the Lord God, who is and was and who is to come, the almighty. See, what God reminds you is when he says alpha and omega, he's picking the first and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. And so what God is saying is this, he's saying, I'm the one that always was, I'm the one that always is, and I'm the one that always will be. Um, what God is saying is that things in this life change, but I do not. So what God is saying is he's unchanging. And, and the hope that brings for us in the midst of a, a world where things can change overnight, as we've all experienced, it gives us an anchor we can anchor our lives into. You know, think about it kind of like, um, think about it kind of like a rock climber. If a rock climber is climbing up a wall, um, unless you're watching one of those crazy free rock climbing movies, which I would never um, suggest you try. Um, what do they do? They have these anchors that they stick into the mountain and, and they stick these, they call them pieces of, um, I forget what they call them actually. <laughs> they stick them in the mountain, right? And, and what does it do? It anchors things in so that it can bear the weight. So when the rock climber sticks something into a mountain, it bears their weight, they're able to anchor their rope into it. And it doesn't matter where they're climbing, they're able to be secure knowing that they are anchored into the literal rock of the mountain. And so that's kind of the idea uh, behind Revelation. Is Revelation, Jesus is saying, I am the rock, that when you anchor your life into it, you won't be moved. You, you may experience the storms of life, you may experience the challenges, you may slip, you may fall, but if you anchor your life into me, you will not be moved. And this is what John is trying to remember Christians who are in the midst of intense suffering. Look, if you anchor your life into Christ, you have something that always was, 
is and always will be. You have something that even death can't hold back. And so if you're anchoring your life in Jesus, you're anchoring your life in a secure hope that will not be moved. And I think that's what's so powerful about this book. So as you're reading through Revelation, start there. Um, you're also going to read through the first five chapters of Revelation. And I don't want to belabor the point here. John is going to talk to um, the seven churches in Revelation. And what I love about these seven churches, this was actually brought up when I took a class with Dr. Brighton, who's the one that wrote the commentary um, that I suggested uh, you all uh, read. But Dr. Brighton made an interesting point with uh, the churches in Ephesus. The churches in Ephesus are sharing with you sins that only Christians can commit. You say, what are you talking about? Well, you know, look at the first one. If you look at the church in Ephesus, um, chapter 2, um, it says, chapter 2, verse 2, I know the work, your works, your toil, and your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but they have tested those who call themselves apostles. I know you are, excuse me, enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary, but I have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first. So what, what's essentially happening here is Jesus is saying, you've abandoned your first love. Well, who's your first love? God. So that's a, that's a sin that only Christians can commit because you can't abandon something you're not connected to. Um, and so Jesus is talking specifically to the churches, and you'll hear that kind of rhythm of encouragement to the church, but then also, hey, warning, watch out for this. Um, and, and, you know, probably my favorite, probably the most popular one uh, of the churches is just simply the, you know, um, I know your works, how you're neither hot nor cold, you're lukewarm, and I'll spit you out of my mouth. I think for us in the American church, I think it's really important to listen in to that one. Because I think a lot of times we can, we can all kind of wrestle with that being lukewarm about our faith, you know, loving a lot of things um, more than we love God kind of thing. And so I think there's a lot of um, important lessons we can learn when we're looking at these churches in Revelation. Um, but what I would say is just always come back to that chapter one, verse eight, I'm the alpha and the omega, you know, who is and was and who is to come, the almighty. That's what all of Revelation is anchored in. The reality that no matter how crazy things get, no matter what trials may come, your life can be anchored into the one thing that's immovable. And if you're anchored into the one thing that's immovable, you won't be moved and you'll have a sure and certain hope that you get to read in the last chapter of revelation. So it's been a joy to hang out with you guys right here on the commute. I want to encourage you. If this is a benefit to you, share it out with other people. You can share it out through this YouTube link, share it out through the Bethlehem church live mobile app, wherever you share it. Um, it's a great way. And then definitely check out faith over fear. Um, faith over fear is going to be an incredible um, series that we get to walk in for the next seven weeks. And so really looking forward to that, but Till next time, it's been a joy hanging out with you right here on The Commute. Thanks for checking out this episode of The Commute. For more information on The Commute or to join the Commute Bible Reading Plan, simply download the Bethlehem Church Live mobile app or go to Bethlehem Church Live slash The Commute.